Test, test. One, two, three. Okay, I think we're good. Yo, Cam. Thank you for the raid. I greatly appreciate it. Let's give you a shout out there, buddy. Let's see. GG doesn't believe you carry a gun. Well, they'd be very surprised. Pokemon in there, Cam. Thanks for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Let's give you a shout out. Folks, if you haven't checked out Cam, I highly suggest you do. They have very chill streams. They're either playing a lot of DVD or they're playing Minecraft or sometimes some other games. You never know what they're going to have. But yeah, go check them out. Also, I'm nearly finished with the comic that I'm working on for them. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. But yeah, how was the, how was everything? How'd be the Minecraft there, Cam? I hope things going well. And everybody, hi. All right, yeah, let's get started with that. Everybody, hi. My name is Lampy, small town illustrator, football size moth. I do a lot of drawing streams, occasional gaming streams, and sometimes some live 2D rigging streams. And today is one of those drawing streams. We are going to be working on a, yeah, we're going to be working on a uh, viewer redeem. They requested that we draw their moth avatar in my style, so that's what we're going to be doing today. With that being said, good to see you there, Isla, Miss Looney, Lirovic. Hold on a second. Let me lower the volume on my end a bit. But yeah. Cam, Jero, how everybody be? I hope you're all having a good day. And welcome on in there, Icy and Power Goose. How are things be? Moth with Tude? Probably, probably that and a bit of a Klepto, uh habit but we don't talk about that <laughs> yo uh let me see how do i pronounce this name give me a second there nero saw unleashed welcome on in how you be i hope you're having a good day and congrats everybody you made it to friday or saturday whatever part of the world you're in and i hope you enjoy your weekend and if you work during the weekend i am sorry <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's get that proper image set up here. Hold on a second. Uh, let's get the image of the character that we are drawing today. Let's move them right over here. Yeah, close enough. Yeah, so this is the model that we're going to be drawing today. Hold on. Move that tablet or move that stylus pen out of the way right quick we yeah so uh, sal moths requested that we draw their avatar which is this but in our style so we're gonna turn this into a you know we're gonna turn this into a moth that we usually work on so without further ado we're just gonna talk or plop them in the corner right there as we begin and uh, let me see let me see how to pronounce this one sane or okay I think that's how you pronounce it. Plushy Moth, Plushy Moth. Okay, let's go to Plushy Moth. There we go, perfect. Thank you for redeeming Plushy Moth there, uh, Miss Looney. Narosa. You blame me for the emote. Wait, what emote? And yo, Sane, good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Moth Fleet. I hope you enjoy your stay. By the way, you're a Lampy now. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Oh, okay. I know who you are now. I know who you are now. Uh, uh, Queen Anna, if I'm correct. Yes. Also, Ryu, thank you for the quack. Thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you're having a good day. Also, folks, I apologize if I take a bit of time to get started on all of that or get started on the drawing. It, usually at the beginning, it uh, you know, it's usually, uh, hey, how's everybody doing? How y'all be? And then everybody rolls on in saying, hey, what's up? And so I try to respond as best as I can. So give it a bit of time and we'll get there. Anyway, also, folks, if you thought, hey, he's a plushie now, we're safe. That's where you're dead wrong. <laughs> uh, thank you for the hydrate. All right, let's get started with this here drum. Now, welcome in, Sal. Thank you for something. I greatly appreciate it. Now, first, we got to get started here. 
And yeah, demon, good to see how you be. I hope things are going well for you there, buddy. Whew. I'm not gonna lie, good to see all y'all folks. It's been a while. Okay, it's been about a week. But a week has definitely still been a while. Mostly because my sleep my sleep schedule it sucked. Badly. I could not stay awake around 7 p.m. Alright. So let's begin. So first. We gotta go with standard style first. We gotta make the moth face. But first, we gotta go with the sketch. We gotta roll in there with the sketch right quick. Once we get the sketch, that's when we can figure everything else out from there. Now, how do we wanna go about this one? Mm. I know what we need to do. We actually... We're actually gonna bring this down. Actually, you know what? Not even bring it down. We're gonna leave it where it is. We're gonna move it upwards. Actually, no, we don't move it upwards, but we're going to go with the upward perspective. You'll see what I mean. It's going to be the perspective we're going to go for, for with this one is the camera looking. Yeah, the camera bottom looking up. Yeah, there we go. It's the bottom looking up angle, basically. We're at the bottom looking at this thing flying in the sky. So let's get started with that right quick. we got to add the fluff. Now, folks, if you're thinking, wow, this drawing looks god awful. That's quite all right. That's because it's a sketch. Not supposed to look good. All it needs to do is get the point across. Once you get the point across, that's when you get all the details in. And that's what I always like to say when it comes to drawings. Because when you're working on the sketch, you never want to focus on all the little details when you're working on the sketch at the beginning. Or you don't want to make it look absolutely completely you know you don't want to look for perfection when you're working on the sketch because chances are anything that you work on in the sketch probably won't be the final design anyway so you put all that work and brain power for nothing and narrow saw or yeah narrow saw thank you for giving uh strangle steel uh a sub i greatly appreciate it and uh strangle steel thank you for stopping by i greatly appreciate it. how you be i hope you're having a good day there buddy all right now let me see what's going on with everybody all right. Moth with two throws bills pole dance for us. What? Sir, this is a Wendy's. Anyway. No, wait, I take it back. Sir, this is a Lampy's. We don't, we don't have that. We have sandwich. You want sandwich? We got sandwich. I know I want sandwich. Oh. Anyway. Now, let me see, let me see. It's going, feel a bit tapped out, how are you? Ah, fair, I understand what you mean. Sometimes, uh, sometimes life is draining, especially at the end of the week. At the end of the week, you know, you, you've been working like crazy or you've been working, you've been doing a lot of stuff throughout the week. Once it's finally Friday, you know, it's, it's time to wind down. It's time to, you know, cool off a bit. Unless you're, uh, unless you're uh, a very outdoorsy or outdoorsy person, then on your weekends, chances are, you know, you know, outdoorsy or party type of person, then chances are it's time to go out there and, you know, to do your thing. But one thing I always like to say when it comes to uh, when it comes to the weekends and it comes to your day off. Always remember this doesn't matter what other people are doing. So long as you were enjoying your weekend the way you want to don't let anyone tell you how to enjoy your weekend. If it's your weekend and people are saying, oh yeah, you should be going out, you should be, you know, uh, you know, doing things for your weekend, but you just want to stay in and just down a whole two liter by yourself throughout the night, do your thing so long as it doesn't kill you. Totally not talking by experience. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so just do your thing. If your weekend and never feel ashamed about how you spent your weekend, if you wanted to spend your weekend doing absolutely nothing and staring at a wall and that's what you did, then that sounds like a good weekend. So long as that's exactly what you were hoping to do. If the world tells you, oh, yeah, you should have been doing this and don't listen to them. Not all the time. Anyway, sometimes they might have some good suggestions, but if that's really not your thing, then don't feel pressured into doing so. I know a lot of friends were always telling me, oh yeah, you should be going to parties and this and that and here and there. And I gave it a shot. I gave it a try. 
parties aren't for me that much i definitely learned so i was like yeah no not doing this again all right now let me try to catch up with everything uh anna needed to back oh needed to back to the fey wilds to rest i'm gonna stick around for a while ah fair 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 good to know good to know so i'm i'm assuming the name is going to change in the future but understandable oh and i got a minor fan art of you you were an inspiration for it wait what this is about minor fan art interesting hold on are you talking to me or are you talking to the cam are you talking to somebody else i've seen child's play and i'm aware of killer dolls i don't know what you're talking about ryu we're completely fine over here absolutely fine anyway currently in two streams at once yours and a friend of mine ah fair 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 pen spin pen spin it is also Rui, good to see you how you be hope things are going well pen spin yeah we are getting no drawing done today thank you for redeeming pen spin all right let's see let's see currently at two okay so that's fair also good to see you there Rui. thank you for something i greatly appreciate it I'm indoors, solo party person. Nice, nice, nice. That's what it's all about there, buddy. That's what it's all about. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I had to get dinner. Parties are overrated. Ah, completely fine. Go get that food. Always make sure you get food. You lampy? No, nice. I would love to see this. Like, that sounds amazing. I got to see how this looks. Like, whenever you get the chance, feel free to send it to me. If it's done, if not, feel free to let me know when it... What, let me know when it's ready. I love seeing that sort of stuff. I'm always, oh yeah, I'm also always surprised when people are, you know, one, inspired to draw, yeah, to draw Lampy, or two, uh, inspired just to draw in general. I actually had one of those moments before I started streaming where, okay, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this game before called Gotcha Force. I've talked about it before, where it's this Capcom game, long time ago, also considered one of the most expensive GameCube games in existence where you get to play or your your gameplay is a bunch of toys from space are fighting for the fate of the world go figure and uh, you know what's it called uh what's the word i'm looking for it's uh it's a game where you know fate of the world you're playing as space toys but the thing that i really liked about that game was one it was a third person uh it was a third person uh game where you're running and dashing and flying around and any character that you see in that game whether they be friend foe or boss they are available to play so if they're like for example there's this one beginning boss like a very terrifying boss to see in this game because at first you see cowboys and ninjas and robot mechs and uh, bugs and stuff and then you see one of the bosses is this big orange dragon that throw, yeah, that shoots a freaking Godzilla laser beam at you. That's right, shoots a Godzilla-like laser beam at you. Guess what? It's playable. That's right, you get to be the dragon. Oh, and there's also this other form, like this mecha Godzilla nearing the end of the game, like this mecha dragon where it's got all sorts of all sorts of crazy shenanigans going on with that mecha dragon that too is playable and i freaking love that yo puka thank you for stopping by and i thank you for the lurk you do your thing and i hope you enjoy the stream in the meantime as well as i hope you have a good day a better tomorrow and a great week now let me see let me try to catch up with everything okay so The heck was all that about? Twitch had a stroke. It kept looping. Dang, should have said something funny during the loop. Like cheeseburgers. Sorry to hear that there, Strangler Steel. Or, yeah, Strang Stranger Still. There we go. Sorry to hear that there, Stranger Still. But I thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Welcome on in. I hope you're having a good day there, buddy. And I hope you're enjoying your weekend. I'm all right. That's always good to hear. I did. I got pizza. Ooh, nice. What kind of pizza? It's done. I gotta see what it looks like then. You let me know what that artwork looks like because I want to see it. I bet it's going to be amazing. I'll be right back with the pick. Excellent. 
<laughs> okay, what was I doing again? Oh, right, right, right. Posted my art in the server if you're curious. I see. I'm gonna need to check that outfit. It's traditional. Even better. What was I thinking about again? Oh, right, right, right. Why was I talking about gotcha? Let me try to remember. What was the purpose of talking about gotcha? Because I realized that I was talking about that, and I feel like there was a purpose behind it. But I don't remember what it was. Yo, silent someone. Good to see you. How you be? I hope you're having a good day there, buddy. Give me a moment. I'm going to try to figure out why on earth was I talking about gotcha? Hold up. I was talking about it for a reason. Hmm. Where are the Valkyrie gone? The Valkyrie's the bird right there. Also, by the way, Lampy, you said it wrong. Wait, what did I say? I thought I said silent someone. Pepperoni pizza with pretzel crust and chicken Alfredo pizza. Oh, what? Chicken Alfredo pizza? Yo, I gotta... Yeah, silent someone. Am I not looking at this right? I got a bit of dyslexia or something. Silent someone. I don't get it. Oh, there's an L. Okay, come on. You did that on purpose. I ain't blind, I'm just tired, and you did that on purpose. Don't you give me that. This is gaslighting at its highest degree. I see. I told you. I told you. This is gaslighting at its highest degree. At making me look like I'm the fool. Making me believe, or trying to make me believe that I don't know what I'm looking at, which is true. I don't know what I'm looking at. I made the assumption, but come on, you made it very slight. You can't tell me otherwise. And that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> anyway. What was I doing again? Right, right, right. I was trying to figure out why on earth was I talking about Gotcha Force? I wanted to bring that game up for some sort of reason, but what on earth was it? I'll find out someday. Lampy, you don't need us to make you look like a fool. Yes, indeed I do. Because if I don't, if I don't have you folks here to make me look like a fool, then I'm never going to realize that it's happening. Also, I see what you did there, Ryu, and do not worry. I'm saving up those points. So, keep you ready for that. <laughs> I may not have, yeah, you may not have noticed, but I was in Sayu's stream. I was lurking the whole time. Yep. So just you wait. Fan art? Ooh, nice. I'm going to have to check that out. Made it up because it means that you're so silent that you can do uh, Assassin's Creed stuff. Ah. See? There you go. So don't you worry there, Ryu. I got you. I see you. I see you wait. Anyway, what was I talking about? Right. That one's gonna drive me nuts. How was I talking about Gotcha Force? I literally... I'm gonna have to go back to this stream and find out. Yeah, you know what? I'm going back to the stream once it's over just to find out why on earth I was talking about Gotcha Force. Genshin or Honkai? Genshin. I haven't played Honkai, but Genshin. I'm still waiting for Fontaine. I'm, we're almost there, folks. We're almost there. Once Fontaine rolls around, you're not going to see me for a week. <laughs> At least I can torment you whenever you're stream as you have to char charge up your attacks in Saya's screen. 
That's true. That's true. But you know what I have there, Ryu? I have bird. Accept the DD Crow. Accept it. <laughs> anyway, uh, how do I get this bird off my face? Uh, hold on a minute. There we go. Perfect. All right, back to the regular stuff. There we go. You wanted to draw fan art of that game. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, I remember what I was talking about. Thank you there. Yeah, thank you there, Gerald. Okay, so what happened there was I wanted to draw some fan art of that game, and I was drawing a lot of it. I was drawing the tank. I was drawing the bugs. Funny enough, I didn't get the chance to draw the dragon yet. Um, so I was drawing all that kind of stuff. I was drawing the tanks and I was drawing the bugs and apparently when uh, what's it called I what's the word I'm looking for when I drew that some folks or yeah one person asked for me to uh, join their the uh, what's it called their well not theirs but there was a apparently like a, a fan page or a fan group in Facebook I think it was yeah there was like a, a fan group page on Facebook about Gotcha Force. And so while doing that, also give me a moment. I saw the redeem. What bird? Nice try, Ryu, but you're going to have to stick with that bird for a minute. You know what? Before I switch, I'm just going to put the bird right here for just to torment Ryu for a minute. Mm -hmm. While I try to figure out what I was talking about. Once we're done, once I'm done with the conversation, that's when we switch back to the regular model and we switch back to, or we change the bird out for the real form. In the meantime, we're just going to hold the bird up to the screen. There we go. Perfect. Anyway, what was I talking about? Right, right, right. So anyway, they requested that. Hold on. I always got to lower the music on my end again. There we go. So they requested I join their group or their fan page or their fan group. There we go. It was the, the group page. There we go, the group page. So I decided, you know what, fellow uh, Gotcha Force enjoyers? Yeah, okay, I'll join in. I send in, or, it, you know, they bring up that they, you know, I should post some of the drawings in there. I'm like, all right, I can do that. I was just doing it because I, I like the game. And at that time, I was like, I'm going to draw whatever I feel like. Nowadays, I basically draw whatever you folks feel like. Anyway... Lampy be sniffing the bird's butt. Lampy doesn't even have a nose. How is Lampy supposed to do that? Especially in plush form. Lampy doesn't even have a mouth in plush form. Get your head out of the gutter, Ryu. Anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Right. So, I post the artwork there, and apparently that got a spark of a lot of people deciding they want to draw some Gotcha Force fan art of their own. And I thought, huh about that what was funny about that was you know someone called me out for it like look what you got look what you done you got everybody drunk not in a malicious way like they weren't looking at me like look what you done this is your fault but more so like you know uh you know just a, a commendable way like they what you did you got everybody drawn and i'm like huh that's crazy and i never went back to that page again not because of, you know, what happened there, but more so our brain fried and life happens. And I just didn't feel like drawing Gotcha Force drawings anymore. Like it wasn't anything that happened over there. It was just, you know, I had a spur of the moment. I drew a lot of Gotcha Force stuff and I didn't feel like it anymore. Time to go back to drawing Yu-Gi-Oh. But thinking about that story, I'm just always thinking, huh, it always feels weird to hear that I inspired anybody to do literally anything because i usually think to myself i'm not a very influential person i don't know why anybody's here in the first place <laughs> so whenever i hear that sort of stuff i'm like how does that even work i thank you i'm honored i don't know what to say because i don't know what to tell you anyway time to go back to the other model and we got to switch out the bird because Rio redeemed bird to angel. So goodbye, bird. Unfortunately, it's time to, uh, we got to go back to the, or yeah, we got to reveal their regular form. So we got to go do that thing. 
and then we will catch up on comments while we read oh uh, let me see Folks, if none of that, what I just said, made any sense, don't worry. My brain is still a little fried as it is already. So, uh, don't worry about it. Yeah. Why won't Lampy move? Hold on. Did I lock Lampy or something? Okay, hold on a minute. I'm trying to figure out why won't... Okay, there we go. I was wondering, like, why won't Lampy move above... Or, you know, move an inch. There we go. That should be good. All right, there we go. Well, I forgot who was asking about the Valkyrie, but yeah, they're back. Anyway, I think it was silent. Okay, let's see. Dang, my guess was gun. Wait, what was that about which guess? Okay, you wanted to draw a fan art of that. Okay, so yeah, we got there. Okay, I got it posted in the community post. Never, except the bird, except the bird, Ryu. Lampy, could I have some motivation or something encouraging words to get me to be creative again? All right, so here's what you got to do. What you got to do is this. Give it time. Give it a minute. Because if you don't have the motivation right now, that usually means that your brain needs, your brain needs some time to recharge. Because, unfortunately, motivation does not come easily. Nor can anyone really tell you something except for... Okay, here's the thing. Here's one other thing that I can mention. Sometimes it takes a minute for things to roll in. Like, maybe it's just someone has to bring up something funny to get the creative juices flowing. Like, for example, once we're done with Sal's drawing over here, we're going to draw a moth potato. Why is that... I mentioned I was baking like a potato and someone brought up that now they can't help but see a potato with moth wings and antennae and then I was like okay I gotta draw that so sometimes it's got to be a spur of the moment thing creativity comes to you not the other way around sometimes and it's unfortunate that you know creativity you can't just go to creativity and be like knock on the door like I don't know if that worked properly but yeah something like that you can't just knock on the door of creativity and be like, you, come here a minute. Nah, creativity has to sneak up on you like an assassin in the night. Just roll on up out of nowhere and be like, it's fine. That's all there is to it. Basically that. They just roll up, looking at you, dead in the eye, and just say, it's time. The creativity has begun. And there you go. So, if you don't have the motivation right now, give it a minute. Thanks. It's just a little hard for me the past few days. Ah, uh, I see. In that case, I'm sorry to hear that there, buddy. In those situations, you just got to give yourself a little bit of slack. Take some time to rest. Don't worry about it too much, because I will definitely tell you this. Life is going to be tough. Life is going to be tough for a lot of folks. And when life gets tough, the only thing you can do is give it a minute, take a bit of rest, not too much time, but give yourself a bit of time to sit back, reflect, and maybe sometimes just have the thing, whatever it is that you're trying to be creative with. If it's drawing, have your notebook, have your notebook or your tablet in front of you. If it's writing, have your notepad in front of you and just you know just leave it there don't even start drawing in it because if you don't have or don't even start writing or drawing or sculpting or whatever craft it is that you're doing just leave it there don't really focus on it but if the creativity spark comes to mind it will be right in front of you when the time is ready but give yourself a minute give yourself some slack and just take a bit of rest because i can definitely tell you i've had moments where i thought to myself life ain't working Things just ain't uh, going my way, like not even a little bit. And I can definitely tell you some things, though life is still a bit rough. It's definitely a lot better than it was before. But when times were tough, I just decided the moments that I did have the luxury to just sit back, take a step away from everything, 
I took those moments because I can definitely tell you I didn't take those moments to just step away from everything friends family work all of it just get away from it as much time as you need to get away from it as you can as you can afford if you can afford the time to get away from it all take the time and it doesn't even mean that you have to go all the way out or spend a lot of money to go out there and do things or to get away you don't have to travel if you don't want to sometimes you could just sit at a park sit in your room sit at a mcdonald's i actually had some times where i just sat at a at a restaurant especially denny's like there was one time where you know things got really really bad and i thought i really need to just sit down with a grand slam and some lemonade and just sit there until i could you know get out of this rut so i could definitely tell you take some time for yourself take some time to get away take some time to reflect if you can afford it whenever you can afford it take that time and once everything has kind of settled once the yeah basically once the storm has settled the creativity will come back life will feel a little easier but also take some time to think of what your next move is going to be because i can definitely tell you those are usually the best times to think about what is it to do now and if you don't know what it is to do now just sit there for a minute just think about it or maybe not even think about that just think about think about anything think about or you know even get away from that if you need to i know i've had some situations where i had to think about a lot of stuff in life but i had to get away from i had to get away from even that stuff in life and just that they're with food sometimes that helps okay now let me try to catch up with everything because i was not paying attention to everything that i was not looking at the chat when i was talking about all of that okay i still find it hilarious that it was patient zero Thank you for the crab rave there, Kim, and welcome in. Thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you're having a good day there, buddy. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I still find it funny that it was patient zero for the Mothify... Oh, that I was patient zero for the Mothify commission. And I thank you greatly for that one there, by the way, Cam. Which, by the way, folks, if you haven't checked out Cam, I highly suggest you do. Because uh, they've been very supportive in the background. Like, they have been, you know, commissioning me left and right. And I greatly appreciate that because uh, it gives me a lot of work to do. And it helps me also get away from a lot of the stuff that I was talking about earlier where, you know, life happens, you need to get away from life, and, you know, that that's one way to do it as well. It just depends on how you need to do it. Okay. Creativity, creativity normally kills you. Depends on the type of creativity. Like, life grabbed me and threw me through ten brick walls. Oh, dang. I'm sorry to hear that there, Icy. Then, yeah, in those situations, sometimes... Sometimes you just need to, uh... Sometimes you just need to... When life throws you around like that, and trust me, I know how it feels to get thrown into a brick wall. Not literally, but I know how it feels when life throws you into a brick wall. I've had... Uh, I have definitely had that situation. I, I'm not ready to talk about it yet, but five years ago, I can definitely tell you five years ago, holy cow. Maybe I'll talk about it someday, but today is not that day. But five years ago, I can definitely tell you that was the roughest year of my life five years ago. That was the roughest situation I have ever been in. And I'm still trying to recover from that situation. But anyway, we'll get to that one someday. Anyway, back to the main point. Main point is... When situations like that happen, when life gets really, really rough, that, like I mentioned, is sometimes you just need a minute if you know people are telling you you know if you if you if uh, other people are putting pressure on you leave that pressure at the door come back to it later 
like let's say you're dealing with a lot of stuff and other people are saying hey you're not doing very much right now like give it a minute don't even yell at them don't try to explain it to them just take the time take the minute and if it's you that you know is putting the most pressure on yourself literally take a step back take a step back from all the pressure that you're putting on yourself and come back to it on another day especially when it's late at night when it's late at night is when it hits the most when it hits the worst i think they call it like the late night blues or something like that but i can definitely tell you the latest of hours is when life hits you the worst when your mind is not your friend when the moon is out so is your mood or maybe that's just me i don't know but yeah just I can definitely also tell you when it gets to those points of time you're gonna want to just let it ride let it ride don't do anything dangerous keep yourself safe but let it ride brings the dark times exactly oh the moon brings the dark times exactly exactly it definitely brings the dark times but yeah basically your best bet let it slide because the very next day once the morning hits Chances are, you won't have that same feeling. You'll be ready for the day. You'll be ready to do what you got to do. And if what you got to do is just take a big nap, if you can afford it, take that big nap. Personally, I kind of feel like that's what I was going through this month is that though my schedule, my sleep schedule was uh, god awful. I just needed, I might have just needed a minute because... This week has been a very busy week. I finished off the... I'm almost done with the five-page comic. I know I've been saying that for so long, but uh, things keep popping up. So we're almost there. We're almost there. Almost done with the five-page comic. Finished off the the, the, the the chat boxes. And uh, what's that last one? Well, finished off the thumbnail at the beginning of that week. And I'm working on three emotes along with the new model and the, the video recording. But needless to say, it's been a busy week. Biz I think this is the busy one of the busiest weeks I've had so far uh, this week because there's also that along with I, well, yeah, one person got named for the emote raffle. So we got to work on their emote. Luckily, I've seen their model. I've drawn it before. So that's going to be a fairly simple one to work on. And all it's got to do is be a bonk emote. So we got to figure out how to go about that. One. But yeah, also, Icy, if you ever need to chat, you know where to find me. And I hope you're, yeah, I hope life gets easier because trust me, I know life, life can be tough. But just keep pushing forward. And you give yourself a little bit of leniency. Things will get easier. Things will get better. Things will still have some tough times around the corner, but... Tough times make tougher people. But that still doesn't mean that you have to go through it the whole way through. Sometimes you just need a rest. Funny enough, I was actually a designer. Okay, when I was working on uh, character designs and like uh, comics and stuff, I did make, I did design one villain. Like this one was a personal villain, like a uh, personal design. But yeah, one of the design or one of the character aspects about this villain, like one of their biggest foils of their uh, character personality design was they were a fighter through and through always constantly fighting looking at literally everything as a battle conversation that was a fight a fight of words literal fights oh yeah you better believe it and this was a character that could not be reasoned with and the whole aspect of this villain was to be that the moral of the story is you can't fight all the time because if you fight all the time your mentality is going to slowly degrade and that was the whole, or that was the thing with that villain that I had with that character is that the more he fought, which was constantly throughout the entire freaking, uh, throughout the entire, uh, 
story that I had ready for that character and many others. But anyway, that, that story ain't coming out. Anyway, but the, the character design that I had for that was that he would fight for so long throughout the his entire arc that his mind would slowly weigh because he never gave himself any time to rest. Even though he was more of a primordial spirit type of character or, you know, type of being, his mind was still, you know, his mind still had stamina and he never gave it time to recharge. So eventually he just became a mind or eventually he just becomes a mindless, a mindless husk that the only thing that comes to mind is conflict. And that's how the, that's how the main characters usually, or that's how the main character or the hero of that story was supposed to best him is that they gave themselves time to, you know, one, they gave themselves time to recover, gave them themselves time to rest, even though they, they themselves thought, you know, they have to keep moving. They have to keep fighting. If there's a monster like that out there, they have to keep on, you know, doing what they can to protect as many people as they can. But, you know, through the help of their friends, you know, power of friendship, all of that nonsense. Now, the power of friendship on that one was not supposed to be they think about their friends and that's supposed to give them the motivation to continue fighting. No, it's more so of their friends let help them understand that sometimes you need a break. You need to take a step back. And for the hero, they had those friends to help them with that. The villain, on the other hand, did not trust anybody. He was constantly paranoid. He const there was no trust in his life. Therefore, no friends or comrades in his life. So there was no one to tell him, take a break. So when the final battle came to, they were both, you know, badly beaten and battered in the fight, but one of them had more mental, mental uh, fortitude than the other where one of them was a lot more cognitive in the fight. Yeah, there we go. That's the best way to put it. Because the hero gave themselves time to, you know, take a break, recharge, take a step back, reflect on everything. They had a moment to, or they had more mental, yeah, they had more mental stamina in the fight where the villain, they continued down a downward spiral to the point where they just were not there anymore. They were literally, yeah, the, the, the point of that story was sometimes you just need to take a step back. You need a break. And that villain did not take that break. He constantly moved forward, constantly pushed, never gave himself a moment of rest. And when it came to the final fight, the moment when it truly mattered, he had nothing in him. He had all the power, all the physical stamina, all the physical energy. There was just no mental energy there. And so there was no focus. There was no think. Basically head empty, only fight. Because of that, reflexes were shot. Mental focus, not there. So the hero was able to best that villain because they had a much fresher mind. And I hope that moral, or I hope that, uh, I hope that little tale that will never come out, or, you know, I hope that story that never publishes, or that will never be publi published, helps you learn a lesson. Take a break, because if you don't, if you don't take a break and you don't give yourself a little bit of leniency, you're gonna fall. That story ain't coming out. Why you tease us? Because I don't feel like making that story. I don't feel like going through all that drawing and all that story and all that stuff. Although not gonna lie, I thought about that story for a long while, like trying to figure out ways to develop the main characters for that one. Uh, there's still some flaws in that story that I thought about and I tried to, you know, uh, build up to that one more and more. But then when I realized probably gonna be like a three arc not even three arc. That's going to be like a six, maybe seven arc storyline. And I got to draw all of that. Did you see the comic that I made? You know what? Okay. 
this is how I know that one ain't never happening because if you go to this one right here, this is a very small story of Lampy and how the this character up here popped up into the story or popped up into or you know came to existence in Lampy's lore. That project took me a couple months. That project took me a while, and boy, howdy, was that one. That was only, okay, granted, that was a good number of chapters there, but that was a very simple, that was a very simple drawing style. But that took a lot of work. So the story that I was thinking of, <laughs> oh God, no, that ain't, that I, I don't have the energy to pull that one off. Mm -mm. Thank you, I'm a need it. I would hug you if I could. That's fair, that's fair. And no problem there, Icy. I hope it helps you in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, if you look at the comic there, I can tell you that took a lot of work. It took a lot of work and a lot of time, so making that story as a comic, that that would span a decade maybe two decades and life is uncertain i don't know if all of four if i could have i don't know if i'd be able to pull it off in 20 years i mean granted i would probably need more people to help me with that comic not gonna lie i kind of based myself on the villain so you can already tell I, yeah, I have trouble with trust issues too. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not to that degree as the villain that I designed there, but uh, yeah, I can definitely tell you. It's tough working with people. I mean, I work with people now with a lot of projects. It's just sometimes it's tough. I can definitely tell you. Sometimes it's tough working with people. I don't know about anyone else. I know there's a lot of folks that it's, they can work with people a lot. They got a lot of projects going on and you know, they're able to interact with a lot of folks, contact them, tell them, hey, got an idea, let's talk. I'm usually the one where it's like, okay, let me hear the idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It sounds like a long-term project. Listen, don't call us, I'll call you. <laughs> uh, and to be fair, it's not a bad project. It's just that I know full well I'm not going to be able to commit to the bit. Now, what was I talking about before this? I don't remember. Oh, right. Um, well, I guess I could just uh, reiterate on that part. Yeah, I don't know how, you know, I always feel weird when people say I inspired them to do anything. I'm like, how? Why? That I do. Maybe it's a maybe it's a case of imposter syndrome. Maybe it's a case of imposter syndrome because uh, I'm usually looking at like this is nobody. I'm just somebody who draws on the internet. That's it. <laughs> but apparently that means a lot to people, and that's awesome. Just don't know how it works. Lampy have moth brain. Exactly, exactly. Lampy have moth brain, so Lampy does not compute. Good lord, I'm speaking in the third person. Well, to be fair, when it comes to the... Whenever it comes to this, I... Okay, this is the only time where I speak in the third person when I'm referring to Lampy as a model, or, you know, Lampy as a character, because I... How do I put it? That's one thing I want to avoid if I ever get dementia, is referring to myself as a moth in the future, so to have a bit of uh, contingency on that one... I usually refer to myself and Lampy as two different folks. Despite the fact that, you know, Lampy is me and the model is Lampy and all that sort of thing, but I try to uh, separate to a degree when it comes to myself and the character of Lampy because I don't want to accidentally refer to myself as that in real life. So I try to keep myself separate from the moth to a degree and good to see you there gab thank you for stopping by i greatly appreciate it save that's a smart move i wish i thought of it 
I thank you for the save there, so. Or, uh, Gab, my bad. I saw the name when I was drawing all of this stuff, and I just, uh, didn't realize it. Okay, let's see. Hey, Moth, it's so cute. Yo, thanks. Are you talking to me or the one on the screen? Because we're currently drawing a... Yeah, we're currently working on line art for Cell. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we're currently working on line art for Cell. If you see right there, that would be their avatar at the top right. Which also reminds me, we need to work on... Yeah, we need to kind of work on that design a bit on our end. No problem, both. Nice, nice, nice. You mean you don't want to confuse... Let's see. Confuse the crap out of your caretakers when you're old. Exactly, exactly. I don't want... God, I don't want caretakers when I'm old. You know what? I think... Okay, I've actually talked to folks about this one. I hope... Okay, how do I put it? I don't want to grow old, if that makes any sense. I don't want to get to the point of decrepitness where I completely lose my marbles. Because that means I'm going to have to be put into a home and I don't trust uh, old folks' homes. I don't trust them. I hear too many problems out there. Which is completely understandable because, you know, the folks that are there, they're doing a job. Which means you're just part of the job. They're not really there to take full care of you. If they're in a bad mood or they just don't feel like the job is for them anymore, they, I... I get the feeling that they're going to treat you like garbage if, you know, they're just like, this is just a job. Which means you're just a job, so they're going to give you the bare minimum. And I'm like, I don't want the bare minimum. Let me just, let me just go die in my room when that happens. Like, uh, uh, forget life alert. You know what? Yeah, and you know what? I take it back. Give me life alert. Let me get life alert when I'm old and gray. When I'm old and gray, just let me get life alert and... If they say I need to go into an old folks home, get me Dr. Kevorkian. Old plus crazy equals happy? Maybe. Maybe old and crazy equals happy, but old and crazy... Okay, here's the problem. It depends on how you lived your life. If you had a happy life when you were younger, when you get older, chances are you're going to remember all the good times. If you had a traumatizing life when you were younger, when you're older... Ooh, boy. I'm gonna come back to you like a dump truck. With all the baggage. How do I know? I had a grandma. Not a good experience. Okay, let's see. We try to catch up with everything. Can you give them a shout out? Wait, give who a shout out? I am pretty sure I'm not making it to 50, to be honest. I don't know how to feel about that one. On one hand, I'm like, you know what? That might be a good time. But on the other hand, it might not be. I don't know. I feel like a good time to go is 60. Now, I'm not saying that anyone at the age of 60 needs to immediately, like, drop. I'm just saying I wouldn't want to reach the age of past 60. No. However, I will say, my grandpa, I, I mentioned this one before, my grandpa, God rest his soul, he made it to the age of 90. And for the most part, he was all there. For the most part, he was all there. The only thing I would say was, he was already crazy. And that wasn't because of getting old, that was because, you know, that's just our family, let's be honest. Or, yeah, that's just my family, let's be honest on that one. My family's already crazy. I feel like, okay, here's the funny thing. I feel like my younger brother in my family is the black sheep. Now, why I say that is because for the most part, he's relatively normal compared to everyone else in the family. So funny enough, he's the black sheep of the family because he's not what a traditional black sheep of the family would normally be because Actually, no, he is the traditional black sheep of the family, but not in the way you would think. The The family is full of weirdos and nutcases. And my older brother, eh, he's, as, he's the most average out of all of us. Yeah, there's that. Okay. Let's see. They're just there for the money if they get bored and done with the job. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
And I don't blame them for that. They're doing a job, they're doing their thing, and at the same time, th th this is old folks' literal lies we're talking about here. And don't, don't, uh, let them, you know, keep a good eye on them, keep a good care of them when they, because, you know, you don't take care of them, that literally anything could happen. Keep an eye on them, folks. Okay, let's see. Popping in to remind everyone you're all amazing people, adorable beans, and a bunch of cuties. No, oh, thanks, Zelda. I put yourself in that category, too. You're awesome as well. And how you be there, buddy? I hope things are going well. The way... Okay, let's see. Shout out to the person you're doing the art for. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Let's give a shout out to Sal over here. Sal's in here somewhere. So, Sal doesn't stream yet. I don't know if they... Or if they plan to, but, uh... I'm gonna go give a shout out to Sal. They are the one that we are currently drawing the work for, so here we go. Yo, happy birthday, Zelda. How you be? Like, how? I hope you're having a good birthday there. Now, I also saw something about pancakes. Let me see. Oh, right. This is what it was. Moth sitting in a restaurant booth, slurping up a cup with a straw. Yeah, basically, basically. Just sitting there. Because... Sometimes the ice just gets to the top of your teeth, and that, that's not a fun experience. Sunday, I'll try to have a me day, because I've been overwhelmed as a late. Good, Ryu, good. Take that time that you can. Like I said, like, get the opportunity to get some rest when you can, because, uh, Lord knows we all need it. We all need it from time to time. Get that rest. Get that sleep. All right, now here's what we got to do for this part. We gotta make a different set of antennae right here. I'm gonna make them look like antlers. Now this is gonna be the moth moose. You got moth man? Well, this is moth moose. And this moth moose commits commit his fur. This moth moose commits fires. I got no clips, but likely would be in the clip for Jero Games. That's okay, we don't have clips here. It's too much effort. <laughs> Now, it's not that I don't want to, just that I don't feel like it. Moth Moose, Canadian Mothman? Exactly, exactly. This Moth Moose goes out there. With its uh, Canucks t-shirt. It's called Canucks, right? Canucks? Canucks? Canoe. Anyway, um... with the maple flag and everything. It goes out there, and instead of stealing your cows, make sure its cows get to the right... Yeah, make sure your cows get to the right of way. And instead of uh, coming after you and, you know, swooping you into the sky... I mean, it still comes after you to swoop you into the sky, but more so to get you on the right track. Like, it'll just pick you up, start flying, and you're looking at... You're probably looking at, like, what on earth is going on? What on earth is that thing that's carrying me? The thing will look down on you and its big red eyes and say, Where can I drop you off, eh? I apologize about the, the, the I apologize about that one. Twitter's gonna cancel me for that. Anyway. But I plan to stream when I get my model made and get the laptop I'm saving for. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so then we gotta redesign the face a little bit. Let's make sure that we get the right design for this. As you said to draw the moth in my style, but we need to fix things up a little bit. Because I don't know if you're trying to get a lampy design moth like that, or if you're trying to get me to draw moth for you in my style. I don't know. So we're going to try to give your model a bit of its own flair, you know? No pun intended, since, you know, you're always talking about arson. I'm going to give it a bit of a rounder face. Bit of a sharper, yeah, a bit of a sharper uh, end right here. Yeah, there we go. Kind of like a beak, in a way, if that makes any sense. Okay, let's see. Fluffy? Fluffy indeed. We need to make this thing very, very fluffy. Very fluff. Very majestic. And as far away from water as possible, because... 
I'm pretty sure we all know this fact by now, but moose. Moose are actually on the menu when it comes to orca whales. I've mentioned orcas many a times before. But the sea world is a dangerous place. Very dangerous place. <gasps> oh, speaking of dangerous. Okay, maybe not that dangerous. I wanted to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh again, because I learned an interesting fact about Yu-Gi-Oh. Specifically, one of its main monsters, known as Exodia the Forbidden One. So, for those of you who don't know about Yu-Gi-Oh, or no, have a little bit of information about Yu-Gi-Oh, if you've seen the first episode, then you might know what Exodia is. But just in case, we're going to give you a little bit of uh, information on Exodia. Exodia, that one monster in the very first episode, where Yugi assembles all five pieces to defeat Kaiba and his blue eyes white dragons, because when you assemble all five pieces of Exodia, he gets some into the field, and he automatically wins you the game. Now, apparently, despite the fact that, you know, Exodia looks like, you know, or, you know, Exodia was a very, you know, was used by the main character, and was seen as a very, you know, you know, one of his ace monsters, you know, so you see Yugi, you think of Exodia, and when you think of Exodia, you think, ah, yes, power of friendship, assembling all the five pieces to defeat, you know, Kaiba and all that stuff. However, we're watching a video, came to the realization that Exodia is truly, how do I put it? Exodia... Well, it may not have been intended for this, but it certainly did happen to be a bit of a source of evil. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, apparently, despite how the series portrayed it, and it's not to say that the series portrayed it wrong, it's just that the unintended, re the unintended result of Exodia turned out to be something more akin to a curse. More akin to what the foil of most villains would be, where Exodia is ultimate power. But that ultimate, cow that ultimate power comes at a great cost. Now you see, in the series, the original, or the first, very first episode, it arrives at, you know, it shows up and it arrives like a miracle. Like a beacon from the heavens giving the hero the, you know, the victory or snatching the victory from the jaws of defeat. And, you know, it's a very momentous and a very, you know, celebratory moment when Yugi summons Exodia. But here's the thing about Exodia. Both in the series itself, past the first episode, in the series itself and in real life, Hold up. Let me start the music again. Both in the series itself, past the first episode, and in real life, anyone who... Most people who usually play Yu-Gi-Oh! Or usually play Exodia, their main focus is... Or, you know, they're basically consumed by its power, in a way. To the point where... How do I put it? They become consumed by the power to where that is all they focus on. What do I mean by that? Look at every Exodia deck in existence. Most of the time, the only thing they focus on is getting to Exodia. Focusing on that. Their opponent doesn't matter. The game state doesn't matter. The, the, the fun of the game kind of doesn't matter. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, most of the time, your opponent... Like, yeah, if you're the one playing Exodia, you're probably playing the deck in a way where it doesn't matter what deck your opponent's playing. You're going to be drawing all your cards. Your entire deck is going to be focused on that one gimmick. And if your opponent manages to, let's say, take a piece away, well, you have no power now. You have no power, it's over. It's a very undeniable power right there, but very fragile. You lose an inch of that power. 
You lose any opportunity to unleash that power. And you're defenseless. And it's not really a back and forth game when you would play an, or yeah, when you use an Exodia deck. It's more so, I just need to get all the pieces and I win. It's not so much, I need to get my monsters out. I need to battle it out. Let's see who has the better strategy or, you know, who has the better strategy? Who has the better mindset? What are we doing here? How can I win this battle? No, it's just, I got to get the pieces. I got to get the pieces. Doesn't matter how many monsters your opponent has on the field. Your only thought is time to get all the pieces. So you even sacrifice the mindset of the game itself. I, I didn't realize that at first because I thought, yeah, I'm gonna play Exodia. I like playing Exodia. It's a fun idea. And then I real, you know, after watching that video, it's like, oh my God, they're right. You literally threw everything away just to, or just for this monster alone. Because when you play an Exodia deck, chances are you have no other. Okay, so how? Let me put it to you this way: When you usually play any other deck, like let's say you're playing a Dark Magician deck, you have other options other than just spam Dark Magician. Dark Magician has its upgrades, goes into other monsters. You have Dark Magician Girl, Karibo helps you get to the Dark Magician and all that stuff. With the Blue Eyes deck, you have different variations of Blue Eyes monsters. You have smaller monsters that help you get to the bigger dragons. And you also have other dragons in that Blue Eyes deck to help facilitate the game state. So sometimes Blue Eyes White Dragon isn't your end-all be-all monster in the deck. You have other options. Same thing with Dark Magician and Red Eyes and any other deck that you have. Exodia? Exodia doesn't share. Exodia doesn't give you a secondary option. It's just... Exodia or nothing. And last but not least, apparently there was a little bit of history in Japan where Exodia literally ruined an event. And not in the way that you think it would. Now, let me explain that one. Let's see. Either way, it's fine. Also, love the pun. Wait, what pun? Who even watches or play Yu-Gi-Oh? I know, right? <laughs> uh, only nerds play Yu-Gi-Oh, am I right? Yeah, anyway. Oh, right, let me get this pen back up. So, going back to the game. Um, what was I talking about again? Right, right, right. So, apparently there was also this other event with Yu-Gi-Oh. Where, in Japan, a lot of, uh, a lot of books came out. Like about one, yeah, let's say one point of time, there's a book that comes out, and there's a piece of Exodia in there. Now, this was before the entire set was released. This was at the way, way beginning of the original series. Or, you know, the Konami version of the series. And they decided to make it a huge event for Exodia by releasing a piece within every uh, within every one of those uh, books that they released. Every time there was a, one of those books, there was a piece in there. And all that was left... So there were four books out there. And all four books had one piece each. So everybody had it, or yeah, if ever, if you were dedicated to it, which was a long time ago, so chances are probably not, and it was also in Japan, so chances are, unless you were in Japan, you didn't get those cards, which was unfortunate, but you know, that's how life be. Let's also save it one more time. Anyway, so in Japan, get the four books, get all four pieces, and then the big event shows up. Uh, I think it was like the Tokyo Dome or something like that. Tokyo Stadium. I don't, I don't know what it's called. But anyway, a big event arena. And apparently there were a lot of big events that happened at that arena. Like boxing matches. Uh, yeah, boxing matches. Um, uh, big concerts. And one of the big events was a Yu-Gi-Oh event. Very first tournament. You win that tournament, you get these special cards. But most importantly, there was one card in particular that you could get at that event you could go in line pick up these packs and you can get the last and final piece of exodia apparently this event was so hyped that it started a riot just for that final piece of exodia and apparently the venue had to shut down because people got injured and two people were hospitalized why because they wanted that piece of exodia People really wanted that power. Oh yeah. Zodia was a very corruptible power. 
I created a lot of degenerate decks and literally hospitalized people. But you know what? How many other cards can say they got people hospitalized? You know what? Only one. Only one. The one and only Exodia. Most powerful card in the game, quote unquote. Literally hospitalized people. That's true motivation right there. I tell you what, that is true motivation right there. Mm-hmm. Virgil would be proud of Exodia. Or maybe the other way around, I don't know. But also, back to the other point. Past that point, every other character in the series past Yuki that tried to use Exodia, they usually had to give up a lot to do it. Going to sleep? Night-night, everyone? All right there, Gerald. You go get that sleep. And I thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a good night. Fair tomorrow and a great weekend. Take care now, buddy. All right, so I think... Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Posture check and hydrate. All right, we'll do. Thank you for the hydrate and the posture check there, Cell. Now, what was I talking about again? Right, right, right. So there was also another thing. So... After that moment, everything else past that point. Any other character that used Exodia, they were either a villain that gave up a... Yeah, that were... A, okay, so... Yeah, they were either a villain or they had to make a great sacrifice just to play that monster. And that's what I mean by Exodia. Exodia is one of those... Uh, Exodia is one of those cursed items. There we go both in real life and in the series, because you have one character called a rare hunter. Now, to be fair, the only thing that I would say that he really gave up was, uh, not so much gave up, but he was working with the wrong crowd. Because after he lost that duel with, the, or, you know, after he lost the duel to Yugi, yeah, I, he either... Lost his mind because, you know, mind control, millennium item stuff. Has Merrick decided to brain control him? Or he died. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I don't think it was confirmed. But, yeah. He, there was a high cost of losing. But, you know, Exodia. And uh, the way he was playing the deck, it was a very degenerate way. It was a very messed up way. There was no... You could tell that that deck was not built to be fun. That deck was built to just spam Exodia as soon as you possibly could. And that is not a fun way to play. I mean, maybe it is for some folks. Depends on the way you like to play the game. But yeah. If you're the opponent, chances are you're not going to enjoy yourself because you're, you're under pressure. You're under a time limit. And you don't know how much time that is. Heck, you may not even get enough time to win. Like, for example, if you look at that one Yu-Gi-Oh! video, so there's this one Yu-Gi-Oh video recording. I love this video because it's so freaking hilarious. All right. So there's this one person. They're streaming one of the Yu-Gi-Oh games. They're dueling against the rare hunter in that ep or in that game. And while they're dueling that rare hunter, they're talking about, you know, old school Yu-Gi-Oh or you know, old school Yu-Gi-Oh was a lot better. Like you have a little more time to work with. Old school Yu-Gi-Oh wasn't so busted. You want to know what happens? In that very same talk, while they're talking about how new school Yu-Gi-Oh is ridiculous and absolutely broken, and old school Yu-Gi-Oh is a lot better, it's easier, you know, you get a little more time to work with things, they didn't get a single turn because their opponent played Graceful Charity. Uh, a yeah, they played a Graceful Charity, which allowed them to draw some cards. They played a, a Pot of Greed to draw some cards, and then boom, they revealed all five pieces. And this was an NPC that did all of this. So when anyone tells you old school Yu-Gi-Oh was balanced, show them that video. Look for that video. You know what? I think if anyone could find me that video right now, if not, I will look for that video link right now. I know it's on YouTube somewhere. Like, you know, Exodia. Yeah, the I forgot which game it was. I'm pretty sure you look up Exodia first turn. I'm pretty sure that video will pop up. Okay, let's see. Virgil would have Exodia in his deck. Knowing Virgil, he will be a meta player, or yeah, he will be a meta sheep. 
playing top tier decks immediately drops them if they get hit by the ban list. Yeah, yeah, okay, so here's also the thing. There was only one time that Exodia actually made it to a world championship. And I've talked about that one more than enough times, so I will spare you the details. But basically, that was a ridiculous deck. But yeah, knowing Virgil, he's a meta player. So right now, you'd be playing, which one's the one right now? Cash tier? The cash tier? No, 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 no. I think the one right now is Labyrinth. Maybe Labyrinth, maybe Plants. Maybe Plants was a fluke, though. But chances are Labyrinth, if you don't know what any of these names are, don't worry about it. Just know that they're, they're expensive decks. Expensive decks that people play, spend a lot of money on just to play in tournaments. And chances are they're going to get hit. They're going to get hit by that ban list. Also, I'm literally not trying to make a pun on this one, but it's getting hot in here. I don't mean because of the fire on the, on the wings. It is literally, it's been boiling for quite some time. I'm pretty sure we've all been baking like potatoes or melting like popsicles. You know what? It's a sketch. Let's just uh, catch things up a little bit more. There we go. That should be good. Okay. Fry have been melting. Same, same. And uh, okay, here's the tougher part. Here's the tougher part, folks. I have my window closed because if I don't, chances are there's going to be a lot of sounds outside and then it's, it's going to be tough to focus. So I kind of have to keep the window closed for the sake of one, uh, avoiding uh, any sort of copyright from music that might pass outside the window and two, trying not to get, well, like I said, I live in the city. So chances are People scream a lot of stuff outside. And none of it is good. So for the sake of the channel, I'm keeping that window closed. Lest somebody yells something that really shouldn't be said. Especially on Twitch. And I get banned because... Something that wasn't in my control. So, to avoid that sort of issue, we keep the window closed. Okay, my potato has cheese and garlic. Ooh, nice. Yo, that sounds real good. Cheese potato sounds good. Right? Okay. With that same logic, would Dante be a combo player? Absolutely Dante would be a combo player, but I also think he would be playing Rogue. I feel like he would be playing Rogue, but like competitive Rogue. Stay away from my potato. Make me. I want that potato. Hand it over. All right, now back to the drawing. Your potato is poison? I'll take that poison. You know what? You're right, that potato is poison. We should test it. I, I, I choose as volunteer, choose as a sacrifice. I will test that potato, hand it over. Potato. Indeed, the potato. All right, Um, let me see. Here's what we're also gonna do. I'm gonna snag this part of the wing. But anyway, so yeah, that was just one character in the series. If you go to GX, you got another character that, you know, sacrificed it all just to get the power of Exodia, just to lose to a freaking, just to lose to you, Bell. But yeah, there's this one character, he plays Clouds. He plays Clouds in the game, or in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series. But he throws his Cloud deck away to play Exodia. So, but in order to get the Exodia cards, he has to sacrifice his love interest. And he does it. And she goes along with it because she is crazy devoted to it. And so she sacrifices himself. He gets the Exodia cards and he loses after the duel that he gets those Exodia cards. So yeah, it really doesn't pan out for him. Yo! Dig a dig. Thank you for the raid. I greatly appreciate it. Let's give you a shout out there, buddy. What were you up to? Let's find out. 
Then put the right letter. Gotta put the K first. There it is. And everybody stopping by from Dig a Dig Stream. Hi, my name's Lampy. Small time illustrator, football size moth. I do a lot of drawing streams, occasional gaming streams, and sometimes some live 2D rigging streams. And today is one of those drawing streams. We are currently working on the line art for a viewer redeem. They requested that we draw their avatar in my style. So we're kind of trying to draw their avatar as a Lampy in a way, some way, shape, or form. So here we go. This is what we're currently working on, and I hope you enjoy your stay. And how did things go for you there, buddy? What were you up to? What's Legend of Dragoon? I don't think I've heard that one. But yeah, thank you for stopping by. Welcome in, uh, Murray. Yo, welcome in, Murray. Haven't seen you in a while. I hope things have been going well. Yo, Exodia? What was that? Go back. Forget the raid. All right, so what I was talking about with Exodia is that outside of that one episode of Yugi summoning Exodia, Exodia has been a really evil card. Like, okay, so I saw this one Yu-Gi-Oh video and it made a lot of sense after I watched it because, okay, so here's the funny thing. When I first saw it, it the video was titled The God of Degeneracy and I was like, I'm sorry, what? Look, I know people have made some memes about Exodia and Little D, but uh, God of Degeneracy, I don't know if we're going that far. And then I looked into the video, I started watching it and no, different type of degeneracy. What it meant was, or what they meant by that by degeneracy was that a lot of players that usually play that deck they're how do i put it their deck is not a very interactive deck they are that is the truest form of solitaire because let's say your opponent has an entire field of really big monsters it does not matter because they aren't playing with you they are skimming through their deck until they get to that card so there really is no there and when you see them doing what they're doing you're kind of stuck watching them summon exodia along with that is that apparently in japan when Yu-Gi-Oh, or yeah when Yu-Gi-Oh was still fresh still new and exodia made its debut it didn't make its debut like it did out here no it was super hyped in japan which was they had four magazines that issued in those four magazines each of them, uh, you know, published separately and at different times, had a piece of Exodia. All the way up to four pieces. The two arms and the two legs. They left the last piece for a big event. They left it for a stadium-sized event. Literally, I think it was called the Tokyo Dome or something like that. Tokyo Hall? I don't know. But anyway, the, uh, there, this was a hall that had a, a lot of events boxing match big boxing matches big concerts you name it they had it and this is where they had the Yu-Gi-Oh event and at that Yu-Gi-Oh event they were releasing the final piece of Exodia the head of Exodia in Japan we in the states had nothing yet but they were releasing it that day and it was so chaotic that they had to shut down the venue because a riot started and some people were injured and two people were hospitalized because they really wanted that because there was a lot of people there that wanted exodia so needless to say exodia had a very corrupting power not even just in the series itself but in real life because people really wanted that exodia luckily out here we didn't have a big event for it it was just legend of blue eyes pack here you go have fun that was it. Which, not gonna lie, feels a little underwhelming. But it makes sense why they would do that. Sumo, Tokyo Dome. Okay, so it was the Tokyo Dome. Okay. Yeah, Exodia decks... Yeah, Exodia decks do that. But they lose pretty easily to Ash Blossom or any sort of interruption. They do. They do. That is most definitely. And... Also, I apologize, folks. Do not worry. I will scroll up so I catch up with everything. But yeah, also, Vesperia. Like, or I think that's how you pronounce it. Vesperia? Oh, Vesperia. Thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. But yeah, Exodia decks are still very fragile. And I mentioned that part too, where their, their main focus is to focus sure, purely on that power. But if you get to them, if you reach them before they have that get that power, or you prevent them from getting that power, they will crumble. And this is what I was saying, Exodia, you know, after seeing that video, 
yeah, Exodia is a very corruptible power, but most of the time, most folks that are aiming for Exodia will meet their downfall because Exodia is a very inconsistent game plan. But if you can get it to work, you automatically win. But that's the thing. You gotta, you gotta strive for that power before you actually get to pop off. And your opponent has plenty of opportunities to stop you from doing that. But at the same time, you're not interacting with your opponent. Your opponent's interacting with you, but if your opponent cannot interact with you, you do not care what's on their side. Like I said, your opponent can have a bunch of monsters on the field. You're basically playing solitary because you are drawing into card after card after card, regardless of your opponent's field. And then you get Exodia and that's it. Game over. And your opponent's just sitting there for five minutes just thinking, I shuffled my cards for this. I did all that work, got my cards ready, set up my mat, got my dice, shuffled my deck, drew my five cards, just to see you pull this stunt. Not gonna lie, a little impressed, but still. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's see. Um, let's see. Legend of Dra Dragoon is a very classic RPG from the fur from the PlayStation One. Digga, digi. All right, let's see. Dig a dig, very classic game. Ah, fair, 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 fair. Yeah, that's good to hear. I don't think I've ever played that game. Or I think this is the first time. Yeah, okay. I think I've heard of it before, but I don't think I've ever seen it get played. Things got, let's see. Things got bad, then good, then bad again, then worse. But now it's better. Dang, I'm sorry to hear that there, Marie. I hope, I'm glad to hear that things are better now, though. But yeah, I hope things get well there, buddy. I mean, to an extent, but Exodia decks are never consistent. That is true. That is true. See, I've only seen one consistent deck. And then they banned one of the cards. So, yeah, that consistency out the window now. But, yeah, for the most part, there was one consistent deck I saw, and that was the trippiest Exodia deck I've ever seen because your opponent had no idea what they were doing or what you were doing. And I don't, I don't blame them. Also, Mr. Mayo, thank you for the follow. I greatly appreciate it. Welcome to the Moth Fleet. I hope you enjoy your stay. By the way, you're lampy now. If you don't know what that means? Don't worry about it. And I hope you enjoy your stay. Okay. Impossible. Yu-Gi-Oh! is fair and bad. <laughs> oh, I can't finish that sentence. <laughs> oh, what company would do that kind of thing? I know, right? Okay, let's see. Funny thing is that Konami shareholders... We're holding a meeting to allow the OCG tournament players to surrender because the OCG tournaments surrendering isn't allowed. Ah. That kind of sucks. Because you know what? Sometimes you just want to just drop the game and be like, okay, I get it. You win. I will go sleep. Have a good stream, Lampy. All right there, Murray. You go get that rest. I hope you have a good night. Or yeah, I hope you have a good night. Better right, tomorrow. And a great weekend. You take care now, buddy. Okay. I always found it hilarious how iconic... Oh, yeah, let's see. How iconic Exodia was. I mean, to be fair, that very first episode was one of the hypest episodes in animes, period. Can't nobody tell me otherwise. Like, that episode is a very iconic episode, especially for a first episode. Now, what do I mean by that? It... It told you everything you needed to know and wrapped up the entire... You could watch that one episode and nothing else in the entire series and be okay with that because that one episode could be a standalone episode on its own. And I'm talking about the very first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! The only thing that gives you a hint of maybe I should keep watching is that part where they show Pegasus for a mere moment. But outside of that one part, you could just watch that entire episode and be like, that was a fun show, and never look back on it ever again. No, I'm not saying that Yu-Gi-Oh! was bad, because I love Yu-Gi-Oh! I watched it multiple times, and I watched the other series that other people just gave up on. But I could tell you that I'm not saying, yeah, when I speak about this, it's not to say that the series is bad. No, I'm saying... That's just how good the first episode was. But of course, I could be biased. But on the other hand, a lot of memes came from that one episode alone. 
Exodia became a meme because of that one episode alone. And if anybody thinks of Yu-Gi-Oh, the only two monsters they think go, okay, in this order, I think it's in this exact order. There are three monsters that people think of when they think of Yu-Gi-Oh. Blue Eyes, Exodia. Okay, and I think it's a toss up between Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl for multiple reasons. But yeah. So I'm gonna go and say the two main monsters that people think of when they think of Yu-Gi-Oh is Blue Eyes because they put Blue Eyes on everything and Exodia because of the meme. Not gonna lie, Ex Blue Eyes is basically Yu-Gi-Oh. You would think that it would be Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl, but I would say Blue Eyes is Yu-Gi-Oh's Pikachu. I said it before and I'll say it again. I ain't nothing, yeah. Mostly Dark Magician Girl for obvious reasons. Exactly, exactly. Always, okay, let's see. But yeah, on the, on the other hand, on the flip side of that, Despite how the series made Exodia look like an end-all, be-all, absolute powerhouse of a monster, which, don't get me wrong, it is, it's just that it's not going to be the best strategy, because here's the thing. In order for you to play Exodia, you have to have five pieces in your hand, and outside of that, the other four, yeah, those five pieces do nothing on their own, which means... If you have four out of the five pieces, you basically have nothing in your hand. Let's say you started off with an opening hand and you started off with four pieces. You're probably thinking to yourself, on paper, it sounds like I got four pieces, one more to go. We're almost there. Wrong. That just meant that you started the game with one card. Now, why do I say that? Because last thing you want to do is put any of those Exodia pieces on the field. You do not want that. Unless you're playing this one specific Exodia deck. But for the most part, you don't want to put Exodia on the field. You don't want to put any piece on the field. You want to keep all five part cards in your hand, but if you don't have all five, well then you just got four dead cards. Which means if you only drew four out of five on your first opening hand, you only have one card that you could use. You better make sure that that card works really well. Because if not, hard to tell you, buddy. It's not going to work out all that well. Want to see some moth person art? If you're looking for moth person art, I think you came to the wrong place because I've been, I've just been talking this whole time. Let me get back to the drawing. Also, comrade, thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. How you be? I hope you're having a good day. Also, where's the music? Music's there. Okay, good. It's just low on my end, I'm assuming. I mean, the god cards are pretty iconic. They are, they are. And trust me, I've talked about the god cards more than enough here where they need to be better. They... They were... They were done dirty in the actual card game. They were done really dirty in the actual card game. The only one that came out mostly unscathed was Sly for the Sky Dragon, or the Sky Dragon of Osiris, however you... Whichever version you want to call it. But yeah, that card, for the most part, kept most of its effects, but it's got no protection. It could die to a man-eater bug. God cards really need more help. Also, Ivan, thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Ah, oh, fellow moth, I see. Okay, let me see. Let me try to catch up with some things. Okay, as a person who never watched Yu-Gi-Oh!, and know nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh can confirm. Exactly, exactly. And that's quite all right. Yu-Gi-Oh, I can definitely say, though I like Yu-Gi-Oh, I can understand that that is not a series for everybody. Because I can definitely tell you, I, I, as a big fan of it, I still have some gripes with the original series. Like Battle City. Good Lord, Battle City. Way too many flashbacks. You know... Battle City had flashbacks in flashbacks. Like, you would literally have someone talking about that one character was bringing this thing up. And it would go back to a flashback of that character. And in that flashback, that character will say, you know, I'll never forgive so-and-so for doing what they did. And guess what? It goes to a flashback of what that character did. And it's like, did you just flashbackception us right now? You flashbackception us. How dare you? Okay, true. But I kind of call BS 
when they were hyping the god cards to be stronger than Exodia. When Exodia literally is just you win the game, so I don't get it, unless the god cards in the anime are immune to Exodia. The god cards in the anime might be immune to Exodia, because the god cards in the anime, they had some very ridiculous effects, especially the Winged Dragon of Raw. This is how busted the Winged Dragon of Raw was. Okay, before we could talk about the, how busted the Winged Dragon of Raw was, we gotta talk about how busted the Egyptian gods were in the actual card game, or in the anime. One, they were practically unaffected by most cards, and the cards that they were affected by, they only, the effect only lasts the turn. So a Regeki wouldn't kill them. Dark Hole wouldn't kill them. If it's a, if it's a continuous effect, that continuous effect will stay there for a turn. Like, let's say, let's go with Fiendish Chain. Fiendish Chain is a card that targets the monster, prevents them from attacking, and they cannot, you know, use their effects as long as that trap card is there. If this were the anime, that effect would last forever on any other monster, but on the god cards in the anime, they would go away. Now, I want to preface that this only worked on the anime because that in the actual card game, no, the Egyptian gods are weak. You can take them out with anything. And I hate saying that because it really shouldn't be the case. You mean the executive producer? Exactly. Slifer the executive producer. Fun fact, the reason why they named it Slifer was because of because of said sec executive producer having the last or you know, being called Roger Slifer and they decided, hey, let's name it after you. And they did just that. And so there you go. Chuba, Chuba indeed. Welcome in there, Aurelius, and I thank you for the 18 months. I greatly appreciate it. How you be there, buddy? I hope things are going well. We were just talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Lampy is gonna gatekeep Yu-Gi-Oh. Right. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. I knew some folks where they said, oh yeah, you know, I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh in forever. I was like, sit down for the next two hours. We got a lot to talk about. It's like, oh, but I got a busy day. Oh no, you don't. You're gonna sit there we're gonna talk to Mugio, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Okay, so we got the sketch going on. Let's shrink this down a bit. And now let's, yeah, let's shrink this down, reduce the opacity, make a new layer, and now it's time to put some line art in there. Let's increase the brush size a bit. 50 should be good. Increase the sharpness. And we should be all set. All right. Raw had about 20 effects in the anime, and for some reason, Ragnarok affects it. I don't know what to tell you about Ragnarok. That one was a strange one. I think maybe it's because there was like two Egyptian gods in that, in that, uh, that spell. Maybe it's because there was two Egyptian gods that were in there to affect Raw in that whole thing, because... Apparently Ragnarok, what it did was, you know, used all the monsters to remove it from play. And since you had both Obelisk and Slifer in there, maybe that's what gave it enough power to actually work. But that's what, that's my headcanon on it. I don't know. But anyway, now going back to the main thing. The reason why I brought up all that stuff about the Egyptian gods and how much power they had in the anime is because... Now... The only things that truly, truly affected the god cards in that series, in the anime, like, had some real effect to them, was the other god card, like Slifer. Slifer couldn't be affected by a lot of things, except for Obelisk's effect, and vice versa. If Obelisk, yeah, let's say there was an effect that decreases Obelisk's attack, Okay, let's, okay, to be fair, the anime isn't a good example, because Obelisk lost, lost a lot of effects, or a lot. Okay, I will also say, though, in the anime, the Egyptian gods are inconsistent. Because I also remember, although, to be fair, that was also a filler arc. Okay. How do I put it? Filler arcs are weird, because they made the god cards a little inconsistent during that one filler arc, where the obelisk was actually able to not 
or be affected by other monsters and stuff like that. It was an odd situation. Anyway, ignoring the filler arc, the whole gimmick of the Egyptian gods where they were not supposed to be affected by a lot of things. And if they were, they weren't affected for very long, unless it was the effect of another god card. Now, the thing with the Winged Dragon of Ra in that series was supposed to be the Winged Dragon of Ra could not be affected, or even the even Obelisk and Slifer were not supposed to be able to affect the Winged Dragon of Ra in any way, shape, or form. But the Winged Dragon of Ra could affect them because Winged Dragon of Ra was supposed to be like in a higher, yeah, in a, uh, yeah, it was supposed to be in a higher hierarchy in any in some sort of way. It was supposed to be a higher level of godhood. Whew. That was a lot to talk about. Anyway. Now, if only that actually worked in the actual card game, because, again, Winged Dragon of Raw, Obelisk, Slifer, the end-all, be-all monsters, you know, the the, the, the most, the most uh, devastating cards in the anime. It could be affected by a freaking Hain Hain. If you don't know what a Hain Hain is... It's this weird looking little gremlin thing with a, like, with the, okay. It's got no legs, it's got no feet, it's only got two, uh, you know, disconnected hands. And a really, you know, a, a, like a, a really big nose that could send one monster on your field to the hand. That thing affects a god card in the card game. Konami needs to fix the Egyptian god, because, uh, this ain't it, buddy. This ain't it. But yeah, Exodia, I don't know why they said they were stronger than Exodia. Maybe they were in the anime, but uh, the actual card game, they're missing a lot. They're missing a whole lot. Now, they've been trying to give the god cards a lot of support, a lot of spells, a lot of traps, a lot of stuff to really give them back that godly power. There's just one big problem with that. You gotta have the god card on the field for those cards to actually work. So if you don't have the god card on the field, those cards in your hand are dead. They're nothing. You can't use them with anything else. So they don't work. So... It... There's a huge problem there. But every time they make a god card, support card, it's not good because there's way too many pro yeah there's way too many problems there it, it just doesn't work getting the god cards on the field is difficult enough as it is and they don't have enough stuff to protect themselves so one you have to struggle to get them on the field they don't give you a lot of benefit when they're on the field so having those cards that are supposed to protect them also don't help you in summoning them. So now you're in a bigger problem because you can't summon them or you can't use these cards unless they're on the field. If you have these cards in your hand, chances are you don't have anything to summon them. And if you decided to switch out those cards for something that helps you summon them, now you don't have the cards to help support them. So you're in a huge heap of trouble because you can't get everything. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You are in some deep... You're in a deep mess. And I think that's the biggest problem with the Egyptian gods is that they require too much to work in this day and age. Even back then, it was a little too much. It's just... There's too many problems there, friend. There's too many problems. They need to retrain the god cards, is what I'm trying to say. They need to retrain the god cards. Give us something that works better. Whew. Also, Ra. Winged Dragon of Ra. In the Battle City. Okay. I've met, I think I've mentioned this before. But Merrick in Battle City... That villain had the most plot armor I have ever seen in a villain. Because every time he was in a big problem... Hold up, let me go check on the music. Yep, music stuff. Every time that villain was in a problem, every time he was in a bind, guess what? The ring, the Winged Dragon of Raw just happened to have an effect that helped him out in this very situation. 
For example, he's got the he's got the Egyptian god. My Valentine steals his Egyptian god, which, by the way, mad respect for that. I love it when you can steal cards. And there, there's probably some context that's needed there, but anyway, we're not going to give it. And back to the main point. She steals his Winged Dragon of Raw. She summons it, but oh, this is where the plot armor rolls in. The Winged Dragon of Raw is locked. Despite the fact that she summoned it properly, it's locked. Why? Because you need a special chant. And the special chant can only be read in Egyptian hieroglyph. How very convenient that he happens to know it. Hmm. So since he's able to say the chant and she's not, he gets his card back for no cost. Afterwards, next duel. Duel against Bakura. Bakura steals his monster. Add respect for stealing monsters. Anyway, steals his card. Summons it. Knows how to summon it. Because Merrick plays a trap card, it shows up with no attack points. How unfortunate. So he sacrifices it, summons up a bunch of other monsters that seems to give him a good edge. Merrick summons up the wing, or, you know, happens to bring out the wing dragon of raw using Monster Reborn. And you know what? It has no attack points. Oh, but wait. There happens to be a special effect that helps him with this certain occasion which no one else knew about because guess what? It's not written on the card. And I call bull. Anyway, that is not, if it's not written on the card, that's called cheat. But anyway, because he knows that there's this secret effect on it that's not printed, that helps him in the situation of not having attack points on his monster, he's able to sacrifice all of his life points all but one of his life points to increase his attack. How very convenient. Hmm. Fast forward to his duel against Joey. Joey has him on the ropes. Merrick has no life points, has no cards, has no monsters, but he does happen to have Monster Reborn. Plays Monster Reborn. Summons up the Winged Dragon of Raw. Huh. You only got like a thousand life points or so. You got nothing that you can't really make anything that powerful with it. Oh, but wait. There's an effect you don't know about. How convenient that it could turn itself into a phoenix. Hmm. How very convenient indeed. So he's able to spend a thousand of his life points to destroy a monster on Joey's side of the field. How very convenient indeed. The only reason why he loses is because the or the very next character that he has to face has far more plot armor than he does. The main character. So there you go. And I broke into a sweat just talking about that whole rant right there. But thank you for coming by to Lampy's rant and hearing me talk mad smack about Merrick Ishtar. The villain of the Battle City Tournament. Or, you know, Yami Merrick and his Winged Dragon of Raw nonsense. Whew. All right. Now, let me see what I caught up with. Or let me see what I missed while I was talking about that. Hey, man. Hey, good to see you there, Aurelia. I think you're going well. How's work? I hope it's going... I hope it's uh, getting easier. Oh, right. I think it was because Ragnarok was considered a divine card. I don't know where that came from. It was a divine card? Plot. Indefinitely plot. Definitely plot. I prefer the other... I prefer my own headcanon on that, but that's also because I'm biased. I prefer the headcanon of it being that they had divine monsters used in that spell card, so therefore, there you go. But who knows? Who knows? I will take that one for what it is and just say plot. Orcus. Oh, let's see. Orcus, you just, you just reminded me of a kid at Locals who tried claiming that god cards were immune to everything because they were gods. Yeah. Yeah, that still happens. I mean, there's some folks out there that legitimately believe that they're that the god cards are immune because, you know, they're god cards. And I, I, I've i actually had a talk with somebody about that on stream once where they brought up, yeah, but uh, the, the god cards have the effect that if Exodia is played, the person who played Exodia loses. And I'm like, oh, you sweet summer child. I wish that were true. I really do. But I got to slap you with some knowledge right quick because I hate to break it to you. 
That's not how it works. I wish it was. No. Also, Freestyler, good to see you. How you be? I hope you're having a good day there, buddy. Thank you for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Sounds like he just did more research than everyone else. I wish, I wish. I just have a god. Yeah, just give you... Okay, I've mentioned this one before, but there's actually a card out there that is more of a god card.